you have to analyze the subchain stages and you get a bending moment diagram like that and uh, because of that reason the aspirin diagram can be like this Then I told you, with time, the actual, the final bending moment diagram will be somewhere here, in between. And this moment is called trapped moment. Trapped moment. Right? It's called trapped moment. And about 50 to 60 percent of the trap moment, moment is lost. Why? Due to creep of concrete. Uh, so the actual bending moment diagram will be close to molecule. So as you construct, as built after 50 years, monolithic, or at least close to monolithic. So, what is the meaning of this? Then, then you have to get an analog for the any moment diagram. So, to, but this is the reality, but to understand it easy, we consider it's only one diagram. So for the when I'm explaining the theory, I'll consider that bending moment diagram for dead loads is one diagram, but actually it's an image. Then I told you that when you have a continuous structure, we can have so many different types of loading, the whole thing loaded fully. And then you can also have other diagrams like this fully loaded, this is fully loaded, like that, or else you can have the first two spans fully loaded. Like that. So, on the other hand, you can have the middle two fully loaded, you get many moment diagram like that. So, the finally, the baby moment in love will look like this, going this way, this. And this way, and this way, and this will be like this. Okay. So then we have to add the dead load and this maximum value. And the minimum value, why? Like so, we can identify two moments, one called MD, the other one called MA. Then we develop some equations. Today is 20. Nineteenth. Nineteenth, eleven, twenty, twenty-two, number one. Nineteen, 
2022 number 2 that is 1911-2022 number 3. So then I said we'll have P over A compression positive compression negative or compression positive. What is I relation please? Compression positive sir. Positive. Okay. Tension so you have P over A plus uh, due to uh, eccentricity, eccentric, so so you get tension P E over Z two P E over Z one, and this is a positive quantity, so this is positive plus. M over Z2, negative M over Z1. So the equations will be so P over A plus P E over Z1 So these are P Plus, now here we are talking about the top fiber, and when the minimum moment acts, it can fail in tension. So, M A over Z1, so it's minus. Minus M O is at one should be greater than F tension at working number one. So R P over A plus R P E over Z two minus M A over Z two. Uh, so when the minimum moment acts, it can it goes this way the it goes like this, it goes like this. So when the minimum moment act, it goes like this. When the maximum moment act, it goes like this. So it goes into fogging. So, so the failure is compression should be less than compression at work. Number two, RP over A plus RPE over Z2 minus MB over Z1 should be less than FCW number 3 because the top fiber fails in compression when the maximum moment X RP over A plus RPE over Z. So this is Z1. Z2 minus MB over Z2 should be greater than FTW because the uh, uh, bottom fiber pairs in fish. So this is number four. And when you uh, write the equations, you get E should be uh, less than minus Z1 over A plus M A plus FTW Z1 or RP. So this is number five, and then you get equation number six. E should be less than minus Z two over A plus MA plus FCW Z two over RP. So number six. E should be greater than minus Z one over A plus MB plus Z1 FCW divided by RP number 7 E should be greater than minus Z2 over A plus MB plus Z2 FCW over RP this number 8 now looking at these equations can you draw a magnet diagram I'll give you about five minutes. 
Why do 10 mAh? I'll give you about 10 mAh. Just draw a magnet diagram uh, after and then derive the condition for Z1 and Z2. Just do this as an exercise because it, it is necessary for you to understand how the equations work. So more, all the equations are there. So how can I do that? Okay. Equation number one, two, three, four. Okay. Now you can see all the equations. So can you draw a background diagram on your own? Just try and understand how to draw the background diagram by these equations and find the condition for Z1 and Z2. Okay. Just draw it on a piece of paper and see whether you can whether you have understood it fully. Marshita? Marshita, yes, sir. can yes, you do sir. that? On a yes, piece sir. of paper, draw this because without doing that, you will never understand the, how the magnet diagram works. So just yeah. do it and see. What are the special features you can find from Magna Diagram? Then I'll, in a moment, I'll show you what are the special features. Okay? I'll give you about 10 minutes. So just draw it and see what are the special conditions that you can derive from Magna Diagram. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay.
is an additional limit called E max. Why? When you have a section like this, so this is a typical section for a highway bridge. What happens? What happens when you have a typical section like this? The centroid lies somewhere here. And then we have to place the tendons here, back here. So based on that, we have E max. If you have anything more than that, we cannot provide the cover. So because of that reason, we have an additional limit. Then we have one condition, gradient of this line or <coughs> this. So gradient of this and gradient of this. So gradient of equation number six should be greater than gradient of equation number eight. So these equations are equal to y is equal to c plus mx. And x is one of rp and y is e. So these are rp diagram or one of p diagram. So you get M is MA plus FCW Z2 or R and that is the gradient of equation number 6 should be greater than gradient of equation number 8. Equation number 8. Equation number 8 MB plus Z2 FCW over R. So you get Z2 should be greater than MB minus MA divided by FCW minus FTW. And this is a positive quantity. This is a positive quantity. So the important thing that you have to understand is the section required depends on Z2 should be greater than MB minus MA divided by FCW minus FTW. So this is the addition of stress range. Stress range. Because FTW is negative, this is addition of stress range. And this is the difference in moment. So if you look at the Betty moment diagram, Betty moment diagram. So this is the this is MB minus MA. MB minus MA is this full range. And if you look at the range, it's equal to this. This range and this range both are the same because the range is decided by the by the bending moment, uh, the the variation in the live load moment. The range is decided by the variation in the live load at a given speed. So that is not important thing. And then you can look at the point of intersection of this point. And this point. So look at the point of intersection of these two. And that is equation number five and six. Five and six. Weight, weight, uh, change, weight, it uh, beats. Just look at that. So equation number six, five and six. So equation number five is. Minus is at one over plus MA plus FTW Z one or RP and that is equal to equation number five is equal to equation number six minus is at two over plus MA 
plus H C W Z two O R P. And from this one, you can find a value for Z one Z two over A minus Z one over A equals. And you can see both equation five and six are depend on N A. So you can see that is equal to F C W Z two. Minus F T W is at one divided by R P, R P, and R P uh, P at this location five and six is equal to the F C W is at two minus F T W is at one divided multiply divided by R is at one. Z two minus Z one divided by A. So you can see the intersection between these two points. These two intersections are independent of the main one. So which means the magnet diagram will be moving along these two lines. Magnet diagram will be moving. Like this along the beam. So that's another observation. So when you want to design a continuous beam, what is the arrangement? We are look at the situation in our highways. For continuous beams, we use this type of sections, and then. We connect, and we have another beam going like that. So the sections will be like this. So the sections will be like that. And you'll ask why we have a chamfer. The reason is these are torsionally stiff, torsionally, torsionally stiff sections. So how the torsional flow occurs? Torsional flow occurs like that. Hello, Angel. Ma, oh, ma, me, can I give you my password? Huh? Okay, Angel. So, these these how the torsional shear flow occurs. So, what is the lever arm between these two? It's like that. Let's say is x two, so the forces are like that at x two, so it has a massive torsional capacity. Then you have to ask why we need a torsional capacity for highway bridges. Why we need a torsional capacity for highway bridges? So this is. Nineteen, eleven, twenty, twenty-two. Page number four, and this page number five of nineteen, eleven, twenty-two. Now we need why we need a massive torsional capacity. Let's say we have a bridge like this, and we have another box girder side by side like that. And this is the arrangement that is used in uh, port access road, and this is all connected. So you have one vehicle. This is a six-lane bridge. So you have one lane, second, third, center median, then three more lanes. So this is the hard shoulder for. Stopping the vehicles in case of an emergency. These are the main main. So let's assume that uh, due to some breakdown, a lorry has stopped here, heavy lorry, and it's the night time. What will happen to this big beam? Beam is like this, loaded here, restrained here. 
So this is H3, this is W. So what is the torsional moment? Is W times H3. Why we call it torsional moment? If you look at the axis of the axis, axis of bending, the axis is like this, so it is along the axis of moment parallel to member. If it is parallel to the member, what can we say about it? It is a torsional moment. It's a torsional moment. It's not a bending moment. So, what will happen if the section is subject to torsion? So, you have to look at the bridge engineering aspect of it. And number six, have you learned how to design a member for torsion, Vashita? Yes. How do you learn torsional design? Have you learned? Uh, yes, sir. some uh, codes given in the uh, some uh, clauses given in the code. Sorry, uh, some clauses given in the code. Yeah, but uh, for PT or for uh, RC? Uh, for RC, I think. Yeah. So basically, torsion is uh, you have to understand the fundamental. Then, then, then you can go to McGinley. Sorry. Uh, Mostly and Manji book and the torsional examples are given, but you have to understand the theory. Now, let's say we have a section like this. Now, if it is subject to torsion, how the torsional flow occurs? Torsional shear flow will occur like this. Go like that. So, what is the distance between this term x4? x4 multiplied by a stress, a force, is equal to torsional moment t. But because x4 is very small, to have a high t, force has to be very large. But the moment the force is large, Shear failure occurs. So, because of this reason, we say this kind of cross sections are very weak in torsion. Very weak in torsion. Very weak. In torsion. But this type of sections versus this. How the torsional flow occurs? Torsional flows like this. And this can be about 2 meters. And here it's only about 160 millimeters. So what happens? This is very strong in torsion. This weak in torsion. So that's why we like this type of sections. So otherwise, if you have these sections, how are we going to do the design? Any of these sections can be there. And it can be even uh, a section like this. There are so many different sections. Any, any of these can be the beam, but these are all torsionally very weak. And you have only 160 millimeter, 160 to 200 millimeter stab. So all these are very weak in torsion. So we desire, consider that torsional constant is very, very, very small and it's close to zero. So it's close to zero because it's very small. We say it's close to zero, close to zero. So we say C is equal to zero or torsionless system. 
So, Marshall, have you learned how to analyze a torsionless system? Marshall? Uh, yes, uh, using relays we can analyze it. So, have you, uh, did uh, Dr. Maskaran uh, taught you that? Uh, no, 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 sir. Okay, so basically, uh, this is what we do. So, how did you learn that it can be analyzed as a tors uh, torsional system, the village? Because you are working for highway. Uh, no, sir, you taught in uh, undergraduate lectures. Ah, undergraduate, yeah, but uh, there are others, so I will teach them. Actually, your MSc, we go even beyond MSc. Right, so, our bridge is like this MB, and we have this at the deck 160 to 200 millimeters. So, what it says, we will have one beam here, one beam here, another beam here. These are longitudinal beams, so longitudinal, each longitudinal beam will represent one beam. So the bridge will be like that, when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beams. Let's say we are having a bridge with seven beams and then every direction, every other direction, every one meter we put a village beam. One more. So then we'll put some supports here. And that support X, Y, Z. So Z is must be there. And for this support, we restrain the bridge. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Support number four, we say X, Y, we said restrain. Support numbers one, two, three, five, six, seven. X is restrained, Z is restrained, but Y. So this X direction is Y direction, Y not restrained. X is okay, Y is okay, Y is not tested, Y is not tested. On this side, we say it's only Z. On this side, we say it's only Z support. Is there X and Y free? Y. Yes, Karim? You can come and meet me at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, you can come and meet me with the design. Okay? Okay. So, this is the way that we do the village. And what is the difference between village and the frame? Frame. 2D. What are the forces in a frame element? So we get axial force, axial. We get a load on it, so we get a bending moment. Whenever you get a bending moment, you need to have a shear force. 6 degrees of freedom. And then the lecture come and meet me at 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. In a village, what do you get? Frame loaded on its plane. What happens in the village? Loaded perpendicular to the plane. Plane of the structure.
When did they when did they develop the religionesis? The first papers appeared in 1964. Because that is the time uh, mainframe computers were available. So people developed the in 1964 how to analyze the structures using relage. So that is not then only the research papers started appearing on relay. So what is the what are the fossils? You get bending moment, and there's another member here. So axis of bending is this. For this, the bending moment axis of bending is this. So this moment is a torsional moment of this. So the axis of like that. So this is a torsional moment. And then you get a shear force. So you get bending moment, torsional moment, and shear force. But if you get an answer for torsional moment, when the beam is like this, you cannot begin to design the beam for torsion. Then we say we have consider it is a torsionless system. And we do not design for torsion, but when you consider that ocean loss system, when you look at the answers, what will happen to the bending moment? It will be higher, higher. You get a slightly higher bending moment when you uh, when you analyze it as a ocean loss system. Why? What is the purpose of torsional system? What is the purpose of torsional system? Torsion will torsion will distribute the load. So when it's torsional, torsional system, it will deform like this. The bridge will deform like this. When it's torsionless system, how the bridge deforms? Bridge will deform like this. So under the load, you get more deformation, higher delta under the load. So if the delta is higher under the load, deflection is higher under the load, what can you say about bending moment? Bending moment will be higher. So that's why we like box girders. Why? So when you are designing a beam bridge, we can apply the load here, or we can apply the load here, or we can apply the load here. But if the load distribution is good, wherever you apply, this beam will take the load. But otherwise, if the beam is not good in torsion, when you apply the load here, it has to take all the load. When you apply the load here, it has to take the full load. When you apply the load, this has to take the full load. Then we say, in highway design, because we are applying loads on, on lanes, on lanes, what happens? Torsionless systems, systems are designed for higher overall load. Not necessary, because we have to apply, apply all the loads at once. But because we are we have the situation where individual loads can come separately, then you will end up you will have to make sure each beam can carry a significant portion of this load that is coming on from this. Because there is not a load distribution. If the load is distributed, you can design for lesser load. If the load is not distributed, you have to design for a higher load. So, so M beams you and Y beams all give torsionless systems, they are less efficient. But if you have torsion systems, they are very efficient. But difficult to construct. So you have to come to a compromise between these two and decide what to do. 
You have to come to a compromise and decide what to do. So what we do is we decide the spans and up to about 30 meters we go with precast pins. If it is more than 30 meters then we consider other systems. And if the span is about 40, 50 meters, and you will seriously consider these box girders because they are definitely efficient structures. And that's why in Port Access Road, I mean 26 meter width, two large box girders are used. Two large box girders are used. And then you have to see, we have a large box cord. You have to see whether it's simply supported. Or continuous. So what is the advantage of continuity? If it is simply supported, you have to design for WS card weight. If it is continuous, this moment can be about WS card over 11. So if the structure is continuous, we have a distinct advantage. But that is not the only reason why we go for continuous structures in highways. In, in the world, there are four countries behind the equator, and here you get temperate, temperate or cold, and you get ice, and they have applied de icy salts. So, when you apply de icy salts, what happens? You have a joint, structure with joints at each support. All these DIC source will start attacking the structure at the ends because the DIC source can leak with the water. So when you have a salt environment, which can lead to it. So how do you prevent that happening? We we'll make the bridge continuous. So sometimes we can we can, we, we cannot use these box sections. Sometimes we use precast sections. So place them on battery pads and connect steel from this side and this side. And we we'll have solid concrete in this area, about 1.2 meters on this side, or another 1.2 meters. We make it continuous, and in that case, it is it is simply supported for dead loads, dead loads. Continuous only for the live loads. Only for the live loads. So, how do you design this connection? You design this connection as a reinforced concrete connection. And when you design the reinforced concrete connection, what is the crack width? 0.25 millimeters. You have to limit the crack width to 0.25 millimeters. So let's see what is the joint that we use in Oruburavata flyover. We design it as uh, 
Same is about the structure. We design it as same is about the structure. Then we add a slab at the we made the slab continuous. And then we cut the job group for the enlargement. So we cut a group and the double bars are continuing here, double bars are continuing here. Double base, we, we, we tie polythene around it and do the completing. So there's a polythene sheet here, polythene sheet here. Then this joint is filled with polysulfide. And then whatever effects, no problem. Why? Because we can have a jot of style and put extra function. So because of double bars, there's, there cannot be independent movement. So this might form a hairline track here, but it's not a problem because it's not going to affect the road or the bridge very much. So you might have mind that there's a hairline track. Is that clear, Vashita? Yes, sir. So, when you have precast beams, we can have many options. So you can see that these are the beams that can be used. Sorry, just one more. So I'll stop this video and share this screen. These are the beams that can be used. All the information is available in the presentation. These are old-fashioned uh, inunity type uh, uh, construction, but this is the modern solution. And uh, and these are recommended for more than 12 meters. And you can keep them like this or even apart. Right. So this is how the death continuity can be given, like the one I told you. These are the details that we use that order. So the bridge has been designed as simply supported, but the, uh, the slab is cast as continuous. 
and to keep everything together we use towels and then we actually finish the joint so that any movement in the slab can be easily done. Right. So with this knowledge, now we can think about how to design a continuous beam. Uh, shall we take a break and then start with Vashita? Okay, sir. Yeah. So we take a break and then start because uh, continuous structures, you have to learn a lot. So uh, with this kind of knowledge, so uh, I have given the equations, so if you can easily find the bending moment diagram and uh, from the Relay that which is so as shear forces, torsional moments will be zero in this type of systems. And then uh, last time I showed you that you know they can be a very similar set of equations to the basic equations of a of an individual beam without composite action. But when you have composite action, also you have a similar situation. Say so four equations, magnet diagram can be drawn, and then I showed you that we want for. Continuous construction, manual diagram can be drawn. Manual diagram can be drawn. So, now we have to see how to design a continuous beam and what are the specialties that you need to address. So, for that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a break and then we start again. So, I'll stop sharing and uh, I'll set recording as well. We we take about fifteen minutes break, please. Yes, sir. Right. Right. So, uh, continuous beams. What is the design method? Let's say we have selected a section. Then we generate the bending moment envelope. We know MA, MB. We know MA. So what shall we do? So let's say we we have this bending moment envelope. We are selected Z1, Z2, greater than the minimum. So we should be able to find a profile like this, a feasible region like this. into which we can fit a profile like this. That is what you do in simply supported case. Simple support case, this is okay, but in continuous beach, this is not okay. Why? Why it's not okay? So let's see what happens in the continuous beach. Continuous beach is having a profile like this. Let's assume the beam is weightless. 
So what is what is the type of forces that is exerted? All these are exerted in forces upwards. And only these places forces are exerted downwards. So what happens when you have a continuous beam? If it is weightless, it is start lifting like this. It is start lifting like this. And after doing all the things you will find now, but in reality, it cannot lift like that. So it is going to go like that. But in reality, we are not allowing it to happen. So it is like we are applying a load this way and load this way, and we are going to get a bending moment diagram like that. And this is called reactant moment diagram. This is called a reactant moment diagram. This is called a reactant moment diagram or second moment diagram. Or some, some say it's parasitic moment. Some call it parasitic moment. So what actually happens is, once you do the design, Select a profile, and we call this M2. Then, when you do all this, when you fit the profile, it is going to give an additional moment. The problem is, until the profile is known, M2 is not known. That's okay. So until the profile, but when M2 is needed, is known, the actual moment is moment on a section is MB plus M2. MB plus M2. So until you find M2, until you find the profile, M2 is not known. But the bending moment that you are use is MB plus M2, not MB. MB is directly from the loads. The actual moment on the section is MB plus M2. But you don't know M2, so you have to go in a cycle. So there is a huge problem that created a big mess in the design of pre-stress concrete continuous beams. What is the problem? If you use the magnet diagram, find the profile, find the force, select the force, find the profile, then you apply the loads, then you find the original bending moment which needs adjustment. Then there's another special profile, and it's called a concordant profile. What is that profile? That is a very special profile. And when you fix a cable along that profile, so these are the downward loads, these are the upward loads, these are the upward loads, these are the downward loads. Delta equals zero or delta upwards. 
mit Franz Hebel. Then upwards with Franz Hebel. It's a very special situation, very special situation. Where that upwards become stable. Right. So, what is a concordant problem? If you have a beam, you apply a set of loads. So you get a bending moment diagram like this. Then you look at the, the magnitude of this load and then you apply the this load in the wrong direction, in the other direction. You like look at the support reaction and you apply it as a distributor load over a small span direction so distance. Then what is if you apply a load like this? What is the bending, shape of the bending moment diagram? Bending moment diagram will take a shape like this. So what happens is when you add these two, you will end up with the bending moment diagram like this. So you can get rid of the kink. So this is called a kink. The problem is you cannot fix pre-stressing cables like this. You have to fix the pre-stressing cables like this. So we have to get rid of the kink. And how we do, do that is by applying the support reaction as a distributor load at the same. So once you apply the support reaction as a distributor load at the support, you can get rid of the kink. So we create a loading system like this. And this is theoretically possible, but what is practically possible to for processing is this. When you apply in the cables, you have to apply the cables with the curvature. Then what we do is we get this bending moment diagram. The bending moment diagram. And we generate a cable profile. as a scaled down version of this bending moment diagram. And this is bending moment diagram divided by a parameter x. And you apply, you have to make it, make this large enough so that all these Upper boundaries and lower boundaries are looked after. Then you apply the pre stressing force onto this cable profile, which is a scaled down version of a bending moment diagram. And you apply loads P, then you find delta is zero. So then we can say any a bending moment diagram due to any load, the loading system on a beam is a con a bending moment diagram due to any loading system on a beam is a component profile. So 
Then how do you find a third quadrant profile? We have our B, box squared. We apply any set of loading. And then we distribute the supports into that direction. Get a bending moment diagram like that. And then K down and fix it inside the bending beam. Why you have to scale down this? What is the dimension in this zone? This in E, this in kilonewton meters. So you have to divide it by a certain kilonewton, then you will get the value. So the scale down factor, factor X, DM bending moment diagram divided by X, X is C kilonewtons. So you divide it by your force, then you get the X. So this concordant profile is a is an entity, a special situation of a concordant profile is a special situation of a tendon profile where M2 is zero. It's a very special situation. So what can you say about secondary moments? Because they are trying to lift the beam from the support. Secondary moments are sagging moments. Sagging moments. Secondary moments are sagging moments. So, we have a bending moment diagram that we get by analyzing the beam and it has M, MB, MA. So, we have MB. This is MA. So, let's say the magnitude here is 18,000. Then we have another bending moment diagram, which is a bending moment diagram like this. These locations, and so this is the same is here. And the support is here. So let's say this is 4,000. So what is the net moment here? The addition of these two, 22,000. So how do you get this situation? What we do is we change the origin of the bending moment diagram. How do we change the origin of the bending moment diagram? What we do is we draw this, we superimpose this diagram, second diagram, on the first, and what we do is we draw it. This way. And then we measure it this way, and when you draw these focus. So this way we change the origin. Of bending moment diagrams. Change the origin of bending moment diagrams. That way we can find the final moments. MB final. MB final, final bending moment diagram. And MA final. And you can see with 
reactant moments, the secondary moments, fogging is reduced, sagging is increased. Fogging is reduced, sagging is increased. Sucking is increased, fogging is reduced. Now let's look at uh, the situation in the bridge. In the bridge, we get a large top flange, small bottom flange. So what can you say? Very good. For what? Second moments. Average. For hogging moments. Why? The bottom flange is small. For hogging moments, it is in compression. It's small. For second moments, this whole thing is in compression. Very good. Huge compression area. So what is the effect of M2O reactant moments or second moments? Reduce. Foggy. Increase. Foggy. Reduce foggy. Increase foggy. Reduce something, increase setting. So what are you going to do? It's good. They are desirable. But there's a limit. Because when you are constructing the bridge, when this will act, When you are when you fix when you are constructing, you construct the section and apply the tendon. Now only the self weight is available. So we say M2 should be a fraction of dead load bones. Otherwise, what will happen if M2 is too large? There's a tendency for the beam to lift up from the support. And you know, these are just rubber bearings and if, you, if the bridge starts lifting up, not good. So because of that, M2 can be about 10% of self weight or it can be 90% of self weight but the important thing is it cannot be 110 times so there is a limit to the self uh, m2 the secondary moment because if the secondary moment is too large 
The beam will lift up from the support. Not good. Yeah, you can't control the beam then. So we generally keep the M2 maximum about 80% of dead load. M2 to be about 80% of the dead load moment. Is that clear, Vashita? Yes, sir. Yeah. You can have too high M2 because then the beam will lift up. So generally we keep M2 around that figure. So how do you design a continuous bridge? What is the method? We have a problem. M2 known at the end. Big problem. Until you complete the design, you don't know M2, and then M2 comes, you find all your design values are wrong. So what is the only way that we can solve this problem? So if you take a section, apply a pre-stressive force P at an eccentricity ES. So what is the bending moment due to pre-stress? Is equal to P times ES. Bending moment due to pre-stress is P times ES. Then, the actual location of pistons, actual location. And then there's another location for EP. Somewhere else, CCP, and it's called apparent location. And we say EP, PEP plus M2 is equal to P times ES. Or we say M2 is equal to P times ES minus CP. So what happens is the secondary moment can give a different location to the cable. So we, we define two locations. One is the actual location of the cable. And that is this one.
previous and then there is EP is an apparent location, not the actual location. So EP, no limits of power. Yes, that would satisfy power limits. Limits on power. And this equation, Es is equal to Ep plus M2 over P or Ep is equal to Es minus M2 over P is called a linear transformation. It is called a linear transformation. It's called a linear transformation. So what happens is EP can be even outside that outside it because it's it's not the actual location. It is an apparent location. And you can you have to understand this EP E ES is based on M2. For EP, no M2 because we have removed the M2 component. So any EP profile is a concordant profile. So you have to have a very important statement, EP, any EP profile, any EP profile, is a concordant profile or M2 is M2 is and EP need not be inside the section, it can be outside the section. But this is the most important statement. Any any EP profile is a concordant profile and M2 is zero. So what we do is to solve this problem, we can have a simple straightforward structural design method. The first step is select a section. So when you are selecting a section, what are the guidelines? You need number of, say, let's say we need two lanes. You need two lanes on a beam. And each lane is four meters. And we need additional 0.5 meters on either side. Now we know the top width of the top tongue has to be nine meters. Then we select the depth span or depth ratio. 20 to 25 inch. So if you are dealing with 50 meters, we select 2 meters. 2 or 2.2 meters.
Then inside the web, we have to have some ducks. So you have to see, you have a duct, 75, and you need 50 millimeters on either side for the poker vibrator. Then you need about 16 millimeter diameter reinforcement. And you need some 10 millimeter diameter reinforcement going in the other direction. So it's from center 37.5 plus 15 plus 10 plus. Say 40 millimeter cover. So this is, let's say this 38, 44, 54, 64, 104, plus 50. I found this 50. 37 plus 50, so, so we need about 300 to 350 millimeters. Web, web has to be 300 to 350 millimeters. To have ducts of 75 millimeters. Now you know the width of the width. What can you say about the size of the top flange? Here you get about 5.5 meters. And then the cabinet was of two meters each. Right. Now we know the width of the top flange. This has to span some distance, so this has to be at least two or three kilometers. And we know the width of this, and we also can say this has to be greater than 175. So basically, now we know most of the dimensions of the bridge, which means we can calculate Z1 and Z2 using this equation, which gives the minimum condition for existence of a magma diagram. And those are the conditions for the minimum conditions for ex existence of a magnal diagram. Here, this condition. This is the condition for existence of a magnal diagram, so we have to satisfy that. So that can be done because then in all the section, you can work out what is MB, this MB, and this MA. These are known and the range is known. So which means you can calculate this. So what we do is now is the second thing, that is the most important thing we are going to assume M2 as a fraction of dead load moment. So to do that, you need to know the dead load moment as well. And you will assume M2 to be part of it. Now what will happen the moment you assume it? You have to find a profile of ES that will generate yeah. 
So if you assume M2, then at the end of the design, the selector DS must generate the assumed values. But why assumption is important? Once M2 is assumed, we know the final bending moment value. So, so we don't have to go in this loop because we have assumed the second moments and if we can generate what we assume, then our task will be very easy. Our task will be very easy. You don't have to go in the loop because the problem with continuous structures is there's an additional moment M2 that will be generated only when you know the when, when you select the profile, ES profile. So if you have to go in a cycle. So how to break the cycle is this. So what we do is to break the cycle, we assume and then we make sure we have a method to generate what is this? So the moment you assume the bending moment uh, M2 diagram as a fraction of the moment, dead load moment, what will happen? So this is MD diagram, this is MA diagram. The moment you assume what happens? You can draw it, and now you can find the actual moment, MB, MB, with reactant moments, MD with reactants, MD value with reactant moments, the ones, the moments are also included. And then what you do is now we know we have to find a profile inside this but just by fitting a profile will not work why because whatever the profile we fit inside it should generate m2 assume so just by fitting a profile will not do. So we have to see how to fit the profile. So what we do is, first we find the boundaries based on this bending moment diagram. And there can be additional boundaries like this. We cannot go, the, go beyond this, we cannot go beyond this value. So the profile is this. Only that. And this is a ES profile. This ES Low boundary with the ES upper bound. So what we do is after finding these boundaries, we transfer it linearly 
and obtain these boundaries, EP boundaries. M2 minus ES minus M2 over P is equal to EP. So you'll find now the new boundary will go like this. And it is out, it can be outside. So these are the EP boundaries. Using this equation, you find EP. And then what we do is we fit a concordant profile in the EP. Because EP boundaries are associated with zero secondary boundaries. Now what we do is we fit a concordant profile. And how do you find a concordant profile? It's a scale down very moment down. Then what we do is we write the equation another way. Es is equal to ep plus m two o p. We write the equation another way, and then we bring this into the beam. So these are E S profile. E S profile. Obtained using this relationship. And what can you say about M2 generated by this? And it will generate the same M2 is equal to M2 assume. So that is the method that you can use. And how do we fit a concordant profile? Select the same beam. Apply any set of logging. Because we are doing that. What we do is we take the same beam, apply loads, apply load this way. These also need but be anything, any any kind of load. Get a bend power diagram that can fit. So what will happen? This is ES profile. So this is EP profile, and it has been fit inside. Two boundaries generated by EP for a given case.
And then you calculate, transfer it back to EPS, calculate M2 due to that, and you'll find that M2 is equal to the same thing. Now the next question is how do how to calculate them? How to calculate them? How to calculate them? And it goes like this. See? And if you take a simply support case for ease of understanding, So you get SP. Then you find this can actually exert some set of forces upwards on the beam. And let's say that magnitude is W. And we say W S squared over A is equal to E. And this is E. So W is equal to A P E E over L squared. So when you have a beam like this, When you have a profile like this, E, L1, the force on this area is A P E over L1 squared. So this L2. The force in this direction is equal to 8 PE over L2 squared. So that means you can find the set of forces, and if you know the forces, what is the next step? You know the forces. You'll open SAP 2000. You know this force. Acting upwards. Okay. I'll draw a minute. So you go to sub 2000. We have this force acting upward, this force acting downwards. And you do the analysis and see how much reaction is generated. And so once you know the reactions, then you can work out these forces, and then you can see how much force should be applied down this. And from that, you can get the bending moment. So you can, once you do this, you can see how much force is applied down this. And that will give you the second.
And that's how you calculate M2, but that is not an important thing for us because we are going to use this method and uh, do the design. So the first one is generate MA, MB, and MB. So what you do is generate MMP, then assume M2, number 3, Find MA with reactor moments, MB with reactor moments, and these are the final moments. Find the final moments. Find limits on ES. Find EP fit a concordant profile that means within the limits you fit a bending moment diagram Find ES profile using ES is equal to EP plus M2OP. And that's it. <coughs> that's it because this ES will generate. Assume M2. So because of that reason, you don't have to go in a loop. One straightforward way you can do the calculations. So Bashita, that's a summary of the design method. So you know how to generate the baby moment envelope. You can assume M2 as percentage of M2. MD at the supports. And once you know MB, MB plus M2 is MBR with the second moments. And then when you know the final moment, you can find the limits on ES for a selected, selected pre-stressing force. And then you can find the limits on ES because M2 is known. ES, EP, no problem. E EP is equal to ES minus M2 over P. So you can find the limits on EP because the limits on ES is known from the magnet diagram. Limits on ES is found from the magnet diagram because we know the final moments. And then you find the limits on EP. And that is by using this linear transformation equation. And then you have to do a manual calculation by fitting a bending moment diagram into these limits. And in the design example, I'll show you how to do that. And once you fit a bending moment diagram inside this, just transfer it back to ES by using this equation, last equation.
using this equation, the last equation. And then you are assured of a beam where all the stress limits are fully satisfied. And also, that will not have any problem with the second deformers because you have generated the same second. So this is how you will come, you know, overcome the problems associated with second deformers because second deformers are not known until the final moments are known. So this is a summary of the design method. So generate, you take the select the section, generate MA, MD, and also the dead load mode. Assume a value for M2 as a percentage of dead load moment because we don't want it to be too large where the beam lifts up. So once you know the secondary moments and the actual moment due to loading, you can find the final bending moment also. And that was our biggest problem, finding the final bending moment diagram when M2 is not known. But now that problem has been solved because M2 is normal. And when you know M2, you can draw magnet diagrams along the beam. You can draw magnet diagrams along the beam. For a selected pre-stressing force, you can find the limits on ES. And when you know the limits on ES, you can find the limits on EP because there's a simple equation, EP is equal to ES minus M2 over P. Then what you do is you fit a concordant profile into the act or a profile that generates zero second moments. And then you transfer it back to the beam and establish the ES profile. So the specialty of this ES profile is it will satisfy all the stress conditions along the beam. In addition to that, it will generate the assumed secondary moments. And because we have done the calculations by knowing the final bending moment diagram, it will, it will be like a simply supported case. In the simply supported case also, we do the design by knowing the final bending moment diagram. In the case of continuous structures, because an additional moment is coming due to the profile itself, we cannot use the simple method that we use in use was simply supported case. So in this case of simply supported, when the beam is simply supported, the second moments are zero anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. But in this particular case, second moments are not zero because of that reason you have to special, specially attack it. The method that we attack the continuous beam is by Assuming a section based on the guidelines, like the width of which you need for the road surface, the depth rule, the thickness of the webs, and the minimum thickness of 175 for the bottom flange. So once you assume all these values, you can find, find the weight of the section. When the weight of the section is known, dead load of the dead load moment is known. And when you have the beam section, you can convert it to a grillage and do perform the analysis. And once you analyze the grillage, you have a proper bending moment diagram, but that is not the final bending moment diagram. You have a proper bending moment diagram due to loading, but at least not the final bending moment diagram. So what we do is we assume values for M2 as a fraction of dead load moment and then convert it to a final bending moment diagram. Now you know the final bending moment diagram, so that means at every section you can draw a magnal diagram. And based on the magnal diagram, you see, select a value of P, which is applicable throughout the beam. And once you know the values of P, and also the limits of for Limits on ES due to that particular pre-stressing force. You can find EP. EP. EP is equal to ES minus M2 OP. P is known, M2 is known. 
ESH is not finding EP is not a problem. So once you find EP, EP refers to a case where the where there's no bending moment. That's that is the apparent location of the table, and we call it a line of thrust. Line of thrust. And all line of thrusts are concordant profile. All line of thrusts are concordant profile. And a concordant profile is a scaled down version of a bending moment diagram. So you can apply any set of loads and find a bending moment diagram that fits inside the limits. Then the job is over. So once you fit the curve, transfer it back to the beam because we can't have profiles outside the beam, so it should be inside. So once you transfer it back to the beam by using the equation ES is equal to EP plus M2OP, now you are assured of a beam that will generate exactly the same secondary moments as we have assumed. And not only that, it will satisfy all the stress conditions along the beam. It will not exceed the tensile stress at any place. It will not exceed the compressive stress at any place. It will be a properly designed beam. Because in a properly designed beam, you cannot have stress violations. Even in the simple support case, we can't have stress violations. That's why we draw the maximum value. But now you have got to appreciate because there are some additional moments that are coming at the last moment. We cannot do the design in a simple manner. We have to look at the fact that there are additional moments induced by the cable installation. And those also need to be included in the calculations. And how we include that in the calculation is by following this particular design. This particular design. So design of a continuous beam is a lengthy process, not easy. So what you do is first, you have to analyze the structure. And we are talking about this type of sections. Connected. So I'm drawing the section of Arugodavata flyover. It had four, four box girders like this. And center median is here. We have one lane, another lane, and a small pedestrian pavement of 1.3 meters. Here, one lane, another lane, and a small pedestrian. So how do you analyze this village? It's a four-lane bridge. And the width of the top flange is 17.6 meters. So massive width. So what we do is we perform a village analysis. So how do we perform the village? We select one village beam here, one village beam there, and this village beam can represent half of the beam. Another one can represent And then to represent the edge, this portion, we can have another beam like that. So this is one beam, this is the other beam. So you get a green edge. Then you get two large beams at a spacing. Then you get the small beam.
So after that, you get another bean, bean color. And then every one meter, you have a transverse beam. The size of the transverse beam is equal to the thickness of this. And you might ask whether this double count be no double counting because uh, it has to be represented in the other direction as well. So then you can place vehicles like this. And then find the bending moment diagram from the grillage analysis. So, in the case of simply the word case, said only one beam, functional system, and we represent the whole beam with one beam. Here, the beam may be little too large to be represented by a single beam. So because of that reason, we can have additional small beams, like marked in purple. Okay. So, this is how you perform the bending moment diagram. Uh, the, the, this, this is how you perform the village analysis. And after the village, you can find MD. Then you can also find M A, you can also find M B. Then we assume M2, and then you can find M A with reactor moments and M B with reactor moments, the final moments. And once you know final moments, you can find ES limits. Then you can find EP limits. Then you can find concordant profile. And then you can find ES actual. And the guarantee is this ES actual will generate the assumed second limit. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to calculate them, they will assume, they will generate the same signal elements. So this is the method. This is how you do the calculations. So you take the beams, select the beams, idealize it as a grillage, analyze it, analyze the grillage, get a bending moment and you know, with maximum moments and minimum moments and the dead load moments. And once you get grillage, you know there is moments. And then you assume M2 values, find the final moments. Once you find the final moments, and once you select a P64 P, you know the ES limits. Then from the ES limits, you can find the EP limits. And from the EP limits, you can, you can fit a concordant profile or a bending moment diagram into the limits. And once you do that, you can find the EP profile, and once you know the EP, you know the yes. The reason is we have a simple equation which says ES is equal to M2 over P plus EP. Or if you write it the other way, EP is equal to M2, ES minus M2 over P. And in this one, this is the actual location of the cable. This is the apparent location of the cable. That means cable appear to be located there, but the actual cable is elsewhere. The cable appear to be at a different location. 
And this is called the linear transformation. So, Vashita, I hope you would have understood this simple part. And uh, I will use an example and show it to you next time. I'll use an example and I'll show you how to do the calculation. Starting from the relay analysis, I'll show you how to do the calculation. Is that okay, Vashita? Okay, sir. So, it's a, it's a straightforward method. Only thing is, you have to understand designing a continuous bridge is not as simple as designing a simply supported bridge because in the simply supported bridge we do not have to worry about secondary bombers because they have no secondary bridges. So the moment you know the bending moment diagram from the village analysis, you can straight away find the limits on in S. Now, to make it as simple as a simply supported structure, in the case of uh, continuous structures, we assume a value for M2. Because we know the value for M2, again, you know the final bending moment diagrams. When the final bending moment diagrams are known, ES, limits on ES, ES can be found. For the simply supported case, the design ends there. But in the case of continuous means, you have to convert it back to P profile limits and then find the secondary moment, then find a profile which is some quadrant or a scale down version of a bending moment diagram. And then you will find the ES actor. So, how do you find the find? <coughs> Then how do you find the bending moment diagram? So then you have to ask this question. Why are we breaking the beams into so many beams? So we have one beam and we are breaking it into four beams. Why? Because we are interested in the finding the torsional moment. We are interested in finding the torsional effect. But when you are finding the profile, you can analyze this beam as one. And it is equivalent to this when T is zero. We are not interested in torsion when they are finding the profile. So because of that reason, we select the beam like this. We select the beam, half the beam. So then what we do is we select half the beam. Then we break it into pieces, say, and then we apply some loads. Need not be the same, one can be like this, the other one can be like this, the other one can be like this. So we apply different loads at each segment. Then we find the reaction values R1, R2, and we say R2 divided by X, where X is this distance. So once you do that, we can find a profile like that, and then see how you can fit that profile into the limits of ES, like we do. In the same support case. In our case also, we, we, we fix a profile into the allowable zone or the feasible zone. Here also we do the same. But here, in the case of simply uh, our case, it's arbitrarily you can fix it. But here it has to be a 
proper bending moment diagram applied for the same structure due to a set of laws where the kink is removed by applying the laws in the reverse direction. So once you do that, you can straight away convert this back to yes. And then the design will end there. So that is the design. So I'll use, an, use a spreadsheet and show you how it happens, how it happens. And I can have something wrong values for axial force or the pre-stressing force. I show you some of the solutions are not working. Some of the very low values are not working. So that is the okay, Pashi, shall we end the lecture? Okay, sir. Right. Thank you. You have got the recording. Sorry? Have you got the recording? Yes, yes. So can you uh, can you upload it to Moodle? Uh, so I can upload it to Google Drive and uh, the uh, link can share with you. Uh, then then uh, then we can ask uh, somebody can uh, upload it. Even I can upload it, right? Yeah. So share the link with me. Then I will upload. It. Only thing is, uh, this file did you break it into two pieces or only one 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 big file? Uh, actually, I have one big file. Uh, do you know how to break it into few smaller files? Uh, yes. Please break and send about four files. Four ah. files. Then otherwise, there's a maximum limit of one uh, one thousand gigabytes or something. Uh -huh. Because you can't have huge files uploaded to Zoom. Uh -huh. So they have to be about 300, 400 megabytes. It's okay. Right? Okay. But if the file size is very large, then it will not allow. So you better break it into about four files. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, Bashi, then. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm.